Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Dungeon Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, today's video I'm going to be taking a, uh, a preview look at the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition Player's Options. Uh, this particular one is for skills and powers, and uh, just a real quick uh, recording note. Um, this is part of my collection of second edition books and uh, I was doing my shelf tours of uh, and I'm on the seventh shelf of my shelf setup as you can see behind me and uh, I, I realized that not all of the items on that shelf I have done long form videos uh, of so um, I'm actually doing this one first and then I'll do the short where I show it on the shelf and talk a little bit about it um, afterwards and then connect them up to one another. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that um, unfortunately I do not have the uh, PDFs of these or at least not ones that include the art. I do have the physical copies of the books and I will be, uh, I will be showing those off. Uh, now whether or not I do the coverage of these, these previews using the PDFs which are just text only or um, or just showing on a larger screen uh, the book and going over it that way. I'll leave that up to you, the viewer. Uh, if you like the way that the presentation was done, uh, then feel free to say, hey, this was fine. I got a good sense of it. Uh, if you'd rather prefer that I actually show the text only PDF as I'm talking about their various things, then let me know that as well. Um, and again, I will talk a little bit about the reason why I don't have the PDFs, um, but um, I do have the physical copies. And so without further ado, I'm going to shift uh, scenes. Now, uh, one thing that's been recommended for me to do is to, uh, you know, give these reminders, you know, in during uh, videos uh, to remember if you're if you're passing through and you like what you're seeing here, uh, please remember to subscribe. I know many of my uh, viewers are actually not subscribed yet, so please consider subscribing and hitting the like button if you enjoyed the video, and uh, leave your comments and uh, hit the alert button so that you'll know when future content is going to hit. Uh, I'm usually dropping uh, three, four, sometimes five videos a week. And uh, I usually try to keep these ones connected. So this will be part of a uh, AD and D second edition um, grouping uh, of videos. So you will be able to see other videos that are connected to this as well. So let's take a look at. So here is the physical copy of the book. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, uh, this is also part of the revised editions, I'm assuming. It's the black cover uh, and uh, just incredible. I mean, the um, talking about the, the construction of the book, it is a, you know, it, its binding is a, uh, a string binding. Um, you know, so it really is holding up well, considering that this is so, you know, this is probably close to 40 years old. Um, so this is 1996, so uh, a little over 30, a little over 30, 30, um, that would be 37 years old. Uh, the, the layout and the writing and everything, so the design is by Douglas Niles and uh, Dave Donald, uh, Dale Donovan. Um, the uh, Gene Robb is the development uh, and editing. Uh, Design contributions by uh, Rich Baker and Skip Williams. Don Hine, editing contributor. Steve Winter, project coordinator. Typography by uh, Angelica Locatz. Uh, graphic design by D. Barnett. Production by Paul Hanchett. Cover art, of course, by Jeff Easley. And the art inside is just phenomenal as well. So you have Wolf Bauer, Tim Beach, Michelle, um, Michelle Carter, 
Roger E. Moore, and uh, a special thanks to Brad Bolas. All right, so uh, the layout here that you can see, and you won't get this from the text uh, if I do use the PDF, the layout here, um, things that are in bold are, are, are written in red, so it kind of stands out. And then you have, um, you know, the chapter, the chapter pages begin with this nice full color page, um, really makes it in, easy to see um, key points such as introduction and character points are now in a purplish um, color and then the various methods and such for rolling are in red. So I really do like the layout of, um, of the second edition and uh, particularly these revised editions as well. And you're gonna see a lot coming out of these. Now this is a hardcover. Um, I'm not sure if at the, in the day it also had the uh, soft cover as well. Uh, that would be kind of like what we what we started calling splat books, and it it became a derogatory thing, um, you know, amongst the Dungeons and Dragons circles, and and it became part of the edition wars and whatnot, and. Um, you know, I, I've, I've said oftentimes on my own channel that, um, you know, I did not play second edition back when it first came out. I would not have been in the, uh, in the position to actually buy all of these things uh, in the, you know, in the time when they were being released. Uh, there were just so many and I was perfectly happy with playing AD&D first edition but, um, you know, of course, going, uh, you know, 30, 35 years ahead of time, um, I was in the position a couple years ago, two years ago or so, to actually buy up as many of these books as I could. Uh, the ones that I really felt were part of running the game. And so that's why, um, you know, I'm covering that that tour of that particular shelf. And you can see that shelf is right there. I'm going through it right now. And, um, and so let's start taking a look at some of the things here. Um, so I will shift over to two things I wanna show. Number one, <coughs> and this is a direct message to um, Wizards of the Coast. So I'm gonna show you the first thing and, and show you the number one reason why. I do not have this in a PDF with its accompanying art and whatnot. Let me just double check that you're seeing here. So here it is on DriveThruRPG. You can get it for $10 as a PDF. And I'm sure that even though they're kind of scans and they're, they're not all that great of a scan in most cases, and, and there's comments here that uh, point that out. Um, that's not the reason why I don't buy these things. This right here is the reason why I don't buy these things. This disclaimer. We at Wizards recognize that some of the legacy content available on this website does not reflect the values of the Dungeons & Dragons franchise today. Some older content may reflect ethnic, racial, and gender prejudice that were commonplace in American society at the time. These depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. This content is presented as it was originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming these prejudices never existed. So they're basically saying that we're putting on this disclaimer and we're we're arguing that, you know, we're making the claim that, um, that we don't want to not acknowledge, like, we don't even want to say that it did not exist, all right? Um, you know, we, we fully support the idea that it was, you know, ethnically and racially and gender prejudiced material um, without any, you know, without any... Um, actual context being applied without any um, 
without any other just evidence of it all right independent evidence of it uh and then they continue on um dungeons and dragons teaches that diversity is a strength and we strive to make our dnd products as welcoming and inclusive as possible this is part of a work that will never end um the game was always open to diversity uh the game system was never closed to diversity and so when they put something like this on their thing, I'm not buying it, you know? And the point is, is that the people that they're trying to cater to weren't buying it anyway, all right? So it's like, and I wrote here, and I, I don't have a problem with writing it here. I would purchase this and many other older editions, uh, older edition D&D PDFs, if it weren't for that vile and defamatory disclaimer that WotC puts on their own products. What a dim-witted move on their part as no one that believes the content of the disclaimer was going to purchase these products anyway. What this does accomplish is drive those of us that would have purchased away from WotC. All right, and I, I firmly stand by that. Um, they have harmed their own sales on something that they own and no one was asking for this nobody needed this disclaimer here so um i really hope that they're not making sales and i never encourage anyone to go to this site and to buy from wizards of the coast um because of this disclaimer all right uh so now i'll get to the free copy of, you know, what you can get online. And uh, this is from an archive, so uh, that's why there's no images in it. It's just a reprinting of uh, the content. So I wanted to just go through the table of contents here and talk about the things that this does introduce uh, as a preview. Uh, and, and maybe at some time, if you request it, I will go and dig into very, very specific areas of this table of contents. But we have character generation and character backgrounds. Um, the character backgrounds part is somewhat new to AD&D 2nd Edition. They were certainly like, um, they were certainly very, very, um, loosely connected to AD&D 1st edition, mostly through the Wilderness Survival Guide and the, uh, and the Dungeoneer Survival Guide, where um, the player characters might have had not so much a background, uh, but they would have had a proficiency from their parentage. You know, what, what their parents did for a living, they might have some skill in that and whatnot. So, but this certainly does take it to a new level. Um, the ability scores, we have strength, stamina, muscle, dexterity, uh, aim, balance, constitution, health, fitness, intelligence, reason, knowledge, wisdom. You can see it's, it's, it's really splitting up the nuances that used to be kind of bundled in AD&D 1st Edition, and now it's expanding upon them. All right. Um, we have uh, alternate sub-ability methods, uh, sub-ability checks, and more about ability checks. So there, you know, I probably will spend some time in an individual video talking about this. <coughs> we have the racial ability adjustments, racial level limits, character points. Racial level limits is something that modern Wizards of the Coast uh, attack as being part of that prejudice. Meanwhile, these are fictional races, you know, these are fictional fantasy races. And just because Wizards has the twisted notion that they reflect real world types of people is ludicrous. All right, it is their own personal bias and and prejudices that they are applying to uh something that was written 35 years ago. 
Here you also have with AD&D 2nd Edition is the introduction of some of the new races. So the Arakakra, sorry, uh, Arakakra, Alagay, Bugbears, uh, I mean Bugbears are always in the game, but now they're playable characters. Uh, the Bullywug, same thing, Centaurs, Flind, Gif, uh, Githzerai, uh, Gnolls, Goblins, Hobgoblins, Kobolds, and Lizardmen, Minotaurs, Mongrel, uh, Mongrel Men, Ogres, Orcs, Satyr, Swan May, Thecreen, and Wemix. Character classes, so they've kind of combined these up now. So Warriors includes Fighters, Paladins, and Rangers. Rogues includes Thief and Bard. Um, so they got rid of the Thief class and they just call it Rogues and then Thief and Bard. Um, the priests are clerics, specialty priests, which is new, and druids. Wizards are wizards and specialty wizards. They have multi-classing and dual classing as they've always had. And then non-adventurers, which I'll probably dig into a little bit as well. Character kits is new. All right, uh, this did not exist in AD&D first edition. So you have these various uh, kits the Acrobat Kit, the Amazon, Animal Master and Assassin, Barbarian and Beggar, Cavalier, which used to be a class, uh, Unearthed Arcana is now a kit, <coughs> which is probably a good thing, uh, too, because the Cavalier class in AD&D 1st Edition was kind of a broken uh, one-note class. The Diplomat, the Explorer, the Gladiator, the Jester, the Mariner, the Merchant, the Mystic, the Noble, the outlaw, the peasant hero, pirates and pugilists, writer, um, so writer's 78, I guess. The, I don't, I don't understand that. Um, that might be a typo. Um, savage and scholar, scout and sharpshooter, smuggler, spy, uh, soldier and spy, swashbuckler, um, thug, weapon master, and creating new kits. Non-weapon proficiencies, which as I said were were found in the um, found in some of the uh, supplementals in AD and D first edition. Uh, come back here probably with a lot more uh, fleshing out and adding to weapon proficiencies and mastery. Uh, so you have uh, AD and D first edition had weapon specialization. Now they have mastery, which uh, I will probably go into more detail uh, and and talk about these. And then there's psionics, which I've never been a big fan of. You know, to be honest with you, I will probably not spend any time with psionics uh, going through this. And then we get into the actual nuts and bolts of the uh, of the book. So I will switch back into views here and come back over here. So as you can see, and like I said, if you request it. I will bring it to you <clears throat> if you want me to focus in on any of these um, table of contents items in, you know, in particular focus on them, then I will certainly do a video doing that. Um, I will, I will try to shuffle these in as much as I can through the rest of the things that I am covering. Uh, so that all being said, I, you know, I hope you enjoyed this uh, preview of the AD&D 2nd Edition Players Options, Skills and Powers. Remember, these are options. All of these things that are in here are optional, so they're not uh, part of the required uh, rules that uh, you would be uh, you know, expected to put into your game, only if you and your players are really looking to expand what uh, AD&D 2nd Edition already had in its core rulebooks. Um, but I hear a lot of positives and, and, and occasional negatives about a lot of these optional rules, uh, and it, you're going to use them to taste. All right, that all being said, um, upcoming for the rest of this week, I will be uh, I will be returning to some of the other video series that I have been doing. Uh, this upcoming Friday and Saturday, I will be at ShireCon. Uh, that is in um, that is in New Canaan, Connecticut. 
and uh, I'll be there for you know a day and a half of gaming. I, I am running uh, Shadow Dark and also uh, Gangbusters at that uh, at that uh, convention. I am really looking forward to uh, meeting some people there that uh, I had not met before. Uh, but I'm also seeing a lot of people that uh, I have uh, you know met before at a number of conventions and. And playing in some you know games that I hadn't played before and so I'm really looking forward to doing that as well some of the videos that I'm doing over these next couple of days will be um, on materials that I'm actually going to be uh, using in you know in that convention as well as uh, you know talking about and and once again boosting that convention so you will see another uh, another video over the next day or two where I am promoting uh, that convention once again and I've had Tom Wilson on this channel uh, now for at least two interviews talking about the convention so if you can make it look it up uh, you'll you'll check it out and um, as always uh, I welcome you to subscribe please consider subscribing uh, hit the alert button so that you'll know when these are coming up and uh, leave your comments in the comment section for sure. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon or at a convention, maybe as soon as this upcoming weekend. Uh, you all have a great one and take care.